This episode is being sponsored by the Complete Dancer Project, which is presenting a one-day course for Irish dancers, parents and Irish dancing teachers at the University of Limerick on August 11th, 2018, from 9.30am until 5pm. For more information, please visit facebook.com The Complete Dancer Project. My name is Martin Percival and you are listening to the Irish Dance Podcast. Folk dance to phenomenon and beyond. Hi everyone, I'd like to introduce today's guest. She's an Irish dancer, choreographer and a highly acclaimed uh, dress designer. Um, Fashion inspired, absolutely gorgeous and she's also a gorgeous girl herself. Please welcome Debbie Carroll. Hi Debbie. Hi. Hello, how are you? Oh, I'm good, love. How's it going? Everything's going good. I just had five, ten minutes to get a coffee and chat, and then I'll be back to my sewing machines. <laughs> <laughs> oh, your poor fingers must be bleeding. <laughs> well, not me, my seamstresses. <laughs> I know it all comes from your mind, right? All the all the designs and everything. So, but yes. we'll talk. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, okay. I just wanted to like uh, have a quick chat about. Basically, the Irish Dance Podcast is just introducing, um, you know, all the talented people that we have in Irish Dance mm-hmm. in our community, and I just would love to, for people to, to get to know each other a bit better. Um, so how did, how did you get involved in Irish Dance when you were a kid? Okay, so I was a late starter. Myself and my twin sister, um, we started when we were eight, nine. And my mummy was an Irish dancer. She was a Belfast Ulster champion for Anna McCoy. So we would always dance around the house with my mummy, but it was never, like, serious. And then it just so happened my mum needed a babysitter for us after school, so she put us into a local uh, dance school. Um, and it was, in fact, the same teacher that taught my mom, taught me and my sister. And we loved it and just became obsessed. We went to a competition, first competition. I remember my sister got first. I got second. Wasn't too happy about that. But, you know, <laughs> that, that's a twin thing. And basically got the bug and just started winning quite fast. And it became our life and my mom's life. We did a competition every week. And that was just it. And then we did, we travelled, we did Ulsters, All-Ireland, Worlds. We danced for Anna McCoy, which was in Kogoy. And right. then we decided we just needed more of a challenge because it was basically myself and my sister really, you know, competing against each other. So we took a risk and we moved to commission. But we followed a teacher who was already in Kogoyle, Anne Reid, and she, you know, she took us to another level. And through her, we did world, we did figures, and she actually was the one who took me and my sister to the edition for Lord of the Dance. So then that was it. And then we went into Lord of the Dance. Um, my sister left earlier than I did. I did 11 years. Good Lord. <laughs> I know. Um, yeah. And... Um, yeah, and I just couldn't leave because I loved it so much. And I moved to Vegas because Lord of the Dance took me here. And obviously, I helped teach here. And if the show was still here, I'd still be dancing on that stage every <laughs> night. <laughs> That's brilliant. That's brilliant. Well, you had two phenomenal teachers. I know both um, Anna McCoy and Anne Reed. So you had some very good training. So, uh-huh. so that, was, that was good. What was competition like for you, like having a twin sister d- dancing then? You know, it was good. It was, um, we were not really that competitive. Obviously, there was always a little bit. So it would be like, okay, Jenny, you get first in this dance, and I'll get first in the other dance, you know? (laughs) Um, But it was obviously being a twin and being identical and being in the same school and the same, it would, we always, we use it as an advantage because she was my competition. She still is my competition, believe it or not, in life. It's weird. But, um, it's a healthy competition where she'll push me and I'll push her. And then, you know, she was always the good heavy shoe dancer and I was the good light shoe. So I would, you know, critique her in one thing and she would critique me in another. So it was always, I always had someone to practice with, someone to train with. It was definitely never lonely. Right. Um, and then even getting, when we went to get our first solo costume, we got the same colors and it was like, the judicators would be like, didn't you just dance? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so, uh, 
And then we did everything together. We auditioned for Lord of Dance together. We both played the bad girl. So it wasn't, it was, it was a really, really good experience. It was like I had my best friend with me the entire journey. Oh, that's gorgeous. That's absolutely yeah. gorgeous. So what was it like auditioning for Lord of the Dance? Oh God, I couldn't walk the next day, but um, <laughs> it just reminded me of like the X Factor, you know, there was just queues and queues. We got the bus down to, no, we got the train to Dublin. We put so much makeup and false tan on it and, um, you know, we just, we got there and we were so intimidated because everyone was so good and, and it was just, and we'd seen people in Lord of the Dance who were like, oh my God, there are celebrities in our eyes and then... We just trained and it was, we got a call back, then another call back and yeah, like it was, it was just like a once in a lifetime experience and then we finally got the call, we were accepted and that was it, it was just a dream come true. Oh yeah, absolutely. And when, and when was that then? What what year did you join that the show? That was, who oh, let me think, uh, geez, 1998, maybe, maybe before that. Right trying to think <laughs> yeah but around that time 97 uh, yeah that's a, around when um it started in in vegas i remember because i was part of that that cast so um do you did you go straight to vegas or uh, no what we started with fate of flames so oh, we, that's right, yeah. We, yeah so we had the privilege of touring um Europe for a year with Michael Flatley. We did Fate of Flames. And then I remember we finished in Belfast in Storming Castle. Oh, and that's wonderful. When, yes. And that's when it was kind of emotional because we didn't want to leave. But then we went off and myself and my sister and another few of the cast, we got sent to Vegas. And then we were resident here. And then for five years, and then my sister left and I wasn't ready. So then I went on to Troop 2 and did the American Touring Company. And Very then, good. yeah. Yes, and I just I loved it so much, but it got to the point where I was like, okay, you're you're the oldest person here. You need to get out and have a life. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's it's a bit difficult, isn't it, when you, when you start to get uh, a bit older yeah. as a yes. professional dancer? Yeah, I mean, and especially as Irish dance is only new as a profession itself. You know, you just. Yeah. Some people stick to it and they want to do it forever, and and uh, but it's it takes a toll on the body, right? Oh yeah, massively. I mean, I had a lot of injuries, like with um, my knees and major, ma- ma- um, sorry, mainly my back, and it was just wear and tear, you know, like over the years, and I'll still get flare ups, but. You know, obviously, when you get a little bit older, like you're not a spring chicken anymore, so you can't <laughs> bounce back. And so, I mean, but but in a way, it's it's kept me in shape. Like, still my to this day, like I still have you know my muscle, and and I I love I love it because it gives you such a great physique. Yes, yeah. Um, so, when did you when did you stop uh, with Lord of the Dance then? And you did you move straight to? Vegas then? Vegas? Yeah, well, I would. I was touring in the American Touring Company, and every time I had a break, I would come here and visit my twin sister. Right. Um, and it's, it's. I just didn't know. I just kept coming here. It's not that I didn't want to go home. I miss my sister. And then I seen her, how successful her life was in America. And I got my real estate license. I remember studying for that and maybe helping her here and there. Because and she, then, she's... A- She's a real real estate agent as well, right? Yeah, she had her own brokerage both here in Nevada and in California. And in California, yeah. And I just decided, I don't know if I want to do that, but I just want to have a life in... Time was just exhausting. You you know, you don't... I got to the point where I just needed to settle down. So I had actually applied for a green card on extraordinary ability. So that took me about a year and a half, two years to actually get... And then once I finally could know that I could stay in America and, like, I still wanted to do something with Irish dancing, I got the call and it was, I decided to hang up my shoes, move here, and then just go into teaching dancing. And then obviously that led to me open doors to a ton of other stuff that I'm doing now. <laughs> yeah, we'll get to that because that's the, yeah. the, the really exciting bit. So, <laughs> um, so. What what I love about um, actually a lot of people that I talk to um, on the podcast, when 
there's quite the transition i was talking to somebody the other day and it, and it can be quite um intimidating and daunting for people to leave the show because it's yeah. su- such a bubble um, oh, yeah. and, and that professional world is lovely you're really well looked after and that kind of thing and then it's you know it's just a hard transition to get into oh, yeah. mm-hmm. um you know a, a career after that but you've done phenomenally well and uh, through you know grinding and really working hard yeah i'm so so proud so proud of you it's lovely to see this is one of the reasons i want to do the podcast is to Mm -hmm. celebrate the successes we have in our community and you've just just, if you can just talk us a little bit through um how you got involved in the in in the design industry so i um it's just like everyone asking the same question. I was like, I don't even know where to start. I didn't study, <laughs> fi- you know. I make it very clear. I, you know, I studied biology back home. I, I still say when I grow up, I want to be a nutritionist. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's my dream job. But I, um, I've always loved interior design. Even back in Ireland, like I'd be buying wallpaper and 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 back when I was a little girl, I'd be sitting sketching and changing stuff. For or, there, I always wanted. Not to be different, but I always just, there was something in me that I'm like, oh, I need to look different. I need to be different. I, it, it's just this, I don't know. I, my mom was a little bit like it. I, and then I, when I first came to Vegas, I actually started an interior design company. So my sister's clients would give me, all her clients would come to me and I would be their interior designer and I'd go buy wallpaper. So I started with like anything to do with fabric or design I loved. So I started doing interior design. But then that, you know, that obviously lasted a few years. And then the designing, it was, I literally just couldn't find anything to wear because I'm so tiny and petite. I would be buying kids clothes yeah. or everything. I was constantly at a seamstress getting things altered and I never liked anything. Right. So I, this will tell you how old I am. <laughs> I was turning 30 and um, I just says, I'm just going to go and make my own dresses. And Nothing fancy, nothing out of the ordinary, just a plain, classy, sophisticated woman, showing nothing, below my knee, something that you're not really going to see in Vegas. And I, I say that a lot because I want to bring that to Vegas, which I'm still trying to conquer. <laughs> yeah. You know? Um, and nothing ever came off it until, oh God, I just, you like, where did you get these dresses? A one person ordered, but I didn't even know what social media was back then. And then a dancer who everyone probably knows, Leanne Nelson, I, she had said, would you make me a dress? And I was like, oh, God, I, yeah, sure. And she wanted a yellow lace dress. And I was like, yellow lace. And I was horrified because I just thought, <laughs> who the hell would... And then canary yellow. And I was like... And then I, I said, okay, I'll do it. Let me put my own twist on it. And I made it, and it just literally blew up overnight with orders. Um, oh. I started an Instagram, which um, I didn't even know what a hashtag was. I'm like, this is how bad it was. I didn't know what a hashtag I knew nothing. But I just started an Instagram page. I started putting my designs on. I started from Leanne. I got another order. And I still pinch myself because I, you know, I, I didn't study fashion. I don't sketch. I don't sew. I don't, I don't do any of that. But I can see things clear. I'm, I, I control the business. I control the fabrics. I, it's, it's literally, I control everything because I am a control freak. Right, <laughs> but, but you um, have the vision. Yeah. I yeah, and I know what I want, and I see things. I source my fabric. I buy the fabric. I go to the post office. It's literally. And I do everything, you know, hands on. And I just started getting orders and orders and then putting myself out there. And then people would approach me to be sponsors. Then I got into Miss Ireland. I got into pageants. And literally, I, I, I have to thank, I, it's obviously a lot of, lot of work and dedication, but social media is the way forward. And I put my name out there and built a really strong brand, you know, and People bought into it, and then I get into retail. I'm in retail in Ireland, England, Beverly Hills. Um, and I, my main, my main, what I really focus on right now is pageants. So I do. I never thought I would ever have a winner, and then I finally got Miss United States. And I pretty much I had I just had Mrs. Florida win. I had Mrs. Ohio win. So now I'm having girls being crowned in my dresses, which yeah, is beautiful. And and I love it, and it, it gives me life. It's the only thing that I live for at the moment. It's it's 
like I get excited when I see fabric. I go, I jump up and down yeah. like a little kid. It's embarrassing, but I'm like, oh my god, it's fabric. And, no, yeah. it's not embarrassing. <laughs> I mean, it's you. Can, it, you can click. I follow your career, obviously on. Uh, Facebook. I'm not much of an Instagram yeah. person, but um, I follow what's what's happening and everything. And you can just see the passion you have for what you do, and that's absolutely beautiful. Yeah, you're bringing you're bringing some some much needed beauty into the world. So thank you oh, for that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, what what is it like being involved in the pageant scene? Is it is it similar to Irish dance? It is a little bit. I remember going to a pageant and being like, oh my God, this is like a dance competition. You've got the mums, the wigs, the tans. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just like, oh God, I thought I was escaping that. <laughs> <Come back>. Right. <laughs> um, but it's different because I'm a designer, so there's no pressure on me. But there is a pressure because I do want to win and dress. Yeah. And, you know, the clients are amazing. I haven't really had any major high maintenance girls but they're very like they know what they want they need fitting they need fabric they want to be different it's like it's like getting a uh, dance costume that's exactly yeah. what it's like no one wants it don't show it um right. so it's very bad very similar then you've got like the glamour and the makeup and i love that i'm just so i'm born to do that so it, it keeps me you know I, I i it keeps me still involved in the whole glamour side but you know People think I wake up and I'm walking around the strip in ball gowns and drinking champagne. I'm like, no, I heard a bun. It's not a glamorous life. It is fabric stores, seamstresses, post offices, email, and then, <laughs> don't get me wrong, it makes up for it, you know? It's yeah. not all New York Fashion Week. <laughs> no, but that is, that is some, um, but you, I mean, as we would say back home, you scrub up pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and so you're very glamorous yourself. So yeah. t- tell, tell us a bit about that New York Fashion Week. That's just, I mean, that blows my mind. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, so I literally got asked very last minute um, to do it, and my first my first um, response was no, I'm not ready, and and I I'll never be ready, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. I doubt myself every day. I still don't think I'm good. I, you know, it's one of those things where I'm a perfectionist. I'm like, is that good enough? Is that good enough? Like what? And it'll drive you crazy, which it has. <laughs> but I just decided because obviously to go to fashion week, very you know financially you've got a budget, you've got a you know, going to New York is, is not cheap. Plus, you've got to buy fabric. You've got to make sure you need to have put on a fashion show is a lot of money. So it's a lot. Of, it's very financially very, very stressful to do. Um, but I just said to myself, you know what? I don't care. I'm going. And I literally worked 12 hour days for a week. I didn't go to sleep that night before. I would start up to three o'clock in the morning. And they're like, what are you doing here, Debbie? And I was like, I'm just working. And I just got on a flight, got all my dresses. It's really, I didn't have time to do a massive collection, but I, I did what I needed to do. And I went there and I just showed what I needed. And I got a ton of more exposure. And yes. Yeah, it was amazing. It was like I had more energy. I, I left exhausted, and I when I got there, I just had so much energy because I was just in my element, you know. And then you come back, and then it's like, okay, you get back to work, and you know, it, it quickly fades off that glamour. You're back, and you're back into work, and the next day, you need to get your orders, and you it, it, <laughs> back nose to the nose to the grindstone. Absolutely. How was the how was the reception? How how were you? Re, uh, how was the collection received? Oh yeah, very very well. Um, they, they loved it. What I do with my dresses is everyone my, every one of my dresses are custom made. I don't make ready to wear dresses. Um, and the majority of my dresses you see, I have never done a fitting on a pageant girl. So people don't understand. They're like, hi, how, how do you do this? How do you get the fit? And it's just literally through tra- trial and error. I will put every single dress on me. And even though I'm t- and the girls are different sizes, like, uh, you'll probably laugh, I probably shouldn't say this on the podcast, but like, I'll stop my sports bra with fabric to make me like a big... <laughs> 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 Like, you can see what, like, I need camera crew on me. Or, like, I'll put on three pairs of trousers to make my hips 37 or, you know. And it's just, I've mastered the dress so well that I kind of know it works. So I just brought what I had with me. And I the, the comments I got were basically on how well the dress is fit. They're like, why do they fit so good on everyone? And my myself and my seamstress have just kind of really got that niche down to a T and focused on it and we know exactly what's taken where to drop you know um 
Yeah, that I mean, that's one thing. I I know nothing about uh, fashion design or anything, but that is one thing that I would say about all of the dresses that I've that I've seen on on especially the pageant uh, girls and and ladies is that it just that they all fit like a glove and they just you know it's just beautiful. Yeah, yeah. yeah and I, I have those girls I've never seen or never met. I just make them and send them off, and it's like, oh god, I am praying, I'm praying every day. Please pray if it's. But um, yeah, so it, it's. It's just, you know, thank God for that. I don't have to worry much. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, well, you clearly, you clearly have a, t- a talent for um, envisioning uh, glamour uh-huh. and, and beauty. Um, what? Uh, there's another thing I want to ask you about. You had, you were part of a TV show recently, right? Yeah. Vegan what, what was that like? Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah. So that was another thing. I got called to do, um, basically, it was like what not to wear. We would go on the strip and, you know, designer, it was myself against five other designers. So I had to pick out, um, you know, people who needed a major makeover and give it to another designer. And they did the same with me. We had $200 budget, two hours to give them a transformation, make them like a million dollars. Um and it was the best experience of my life. It was amazing. I didn't know I could do it because I don't give, I'm not, I wouldn't call myself a stylist. I wouldn't give someone a makeover. Sometimes I'm like, I need the makeover if you could see me half days, you know, but um, I'm a designer, but but I loved it. And I, um, I had a few girls and I just made like classy. And then I had a guy, I had two guys and I actually love working with the guys better because I made them really European, which I like, you know, and um, so I'm I'm debating whether to get in the men's world. I don't think I'm ever going to go that route, but I'm not going to say no. But the TV show was amazing. No, don't say no. I'd love to see that. The TV show was amazing. And I would love to, I would love to try and get a little bit more into that and put on a show, you know, like we're basically Susie and Trini from back home. Susanna and Trini. Yeah. Uh By then. That's what I, yeah, again, that's what I want to be when I grow up, you know, like just giving makeovers and making someone feel glamorous. I just, you know, I I love the, I love the glamour life. I'm not going to (laughs) lie. No, that and and there's no, nothing wrong with that yeah. at all. Um, so, in terms of Irish dance, then how do you th- how do you think that the being an Irish dancer and a professional Irish dancer has helped you in transitioning into your career into the, the fashion industry? Because you, you're you're very successful, but it didn't it doesn't didn't happen overnight. No, 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 no. I just think obviously with any kind of dancing and especially being on board the dance, it's one of those things where we're not afraid to work hard and we work and you work and you work and you work. And I don't know where that's been instilled in me from my mummy, who is my mentor, thank God, and my sister, or it was like Michael Flatley or it was Mary Duffy. It was probably a combination of blood, sweat and tears and you'll get there, you know. Um, and just being around obviously you you when you're in Lord of the Dance, you're around the most gorgeous girls in the world. So you you always wanna you know the, uh, the you're sitting in a dressing room and everyone wants to be the lead dancer. Everyone so you're always it was kind of just in my blood. You know, you're around glamorous girls, you're around fashion, you're around people from all over the world, you're going to parties, you were going to nightclubs. So it was all you know, it all comes hand in hand really. Yeah, and you're from Ulster, so you, you know yes. what competition you know what competition is like. Oh, you can you can God. deal with that, no problem. Um, yeah, and we love our makeup and our tan, and it's like yeah, it doesn't change, it doesn't go no, away. It, it doesn't, and it and it's lovely. But it's just uh, w- what I particularly like is that you're bringing an aspect of glamour to America that you know yeah. that that's not ne- or especially Vegas is not yeah. ne- necessarily seen, and that's that's amazing. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I'm. I mean, I still have a long, long way to go, um, and I'm trying to figure out where I'm going right now. Do I want to open my own store? Do I want to do retail? Or sometimes, some days I'm like, oh, should I just retire and give it up? Because <laughs> I'm exhausted. <laughs> but I can't. I would never forgive myself, you know. And um, I still, my, you know, my heart's still back home. It'll always be home and I always want to bring something to Ireland or put a store there or something you know that's where my heart is kind of if I'm honest yeah but and I under, I totally understand that as well um 
but the opportunities we have over here in the states is just it's just a, know. amazing you know um, exactly yeah and i love it and you know maybe i'll even go somewhere else i want to maybe get try going into maybe retail in miami or beverly hills and you know, that's, a, that's a whole other process in itself um a few boutiques a few boutiques actually have picked up my line this week for my pageant gown which is good so it's maybe getting into stores and building a strong brand. And um, I'm back in New York September for another fashion show. So oh, I wanna, amazing. I want to bring out a different collection. I want to do more couture, more... I'm, I'm still working on it. <laughs> yeah, but it's just, you know, you've got so much energy and you've got so much vision and so much passion that I have no doubt that whatever you put your hand to, you will be successful. So, Thank you. Yeah, yeah. no, I, I'm, I'm so pr- I'm so proud of you. Um, and as an Irish dancer, we, we should be proud of all of the everybody who's successful. Oh my god, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's uh, so much talent. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. So um, just quickly, what? Um, so you've got an amazing career ahead of you with uh, with your fashion stuff. But where do you see where do you see Irish dance evolving? And and are you? I mean. You're he- you help teach and yeah. in Vegas, and so you see the competition side, and like, is what is what is what makes you happy in that world, and what what doesn't? Oh God! Well, I love it. I anything to do with kids. I love kids. I love taking a kid and training a kid and seeing the potential there is. Um, I mean, I went home to the world not this year, last year with my mummy and Shelly, who I teach with, and I was just blindsided I was like what the hell are these kids doing like right. they're, they're just they're it's they're just pure athletes what I love I what I love about it I love the dedication I love that it keeps kids focused I love you know where I can take a kid what I don't like about it is I well you know I don't know if I'm going to say I don't like how hard it is on the kids I don't like you know we're all, I know how my teacher spoke to me. Sometimes I train and I'm like, it's it's a healthy and it's unhealthy. And I think it's like that but in any kind of sport. Um, it's so competitive yeah. right now. That it's getting, it's just getting, imp- it's getting totally impossible for kids to even break into like a recall or, and it's so frustrating because you'll put in all of this time and money and I'm like, oh my god like is it worth it you know um and the pressure that's on the parents and the kids not not just for going to class not, but the tra- to travel to a competition to the wigs to the makeup to the the costumes it's like my mommy mortgaged our house to buy me a costume 10 years ago you know what i mean so what are they doing now yeah you know? no I, absolutely absolutely i've you know i've spoken to a few people and um you know, there's some ideas around um, having different divisions and have just, have you know, be. yeah, just just building it because it has grown so much, and that's yeah. all, that's all thanks to um, you know oh, the, yeah. the people that came before us as teachers, mm-hmm. and you know, and then the choreographers and stuff like that. You know, I mean, Irish dance, I, it's not going anywhere. Yeah, um, and of course, I know I'll be involved in the Irish dance world until I, <laughs> until I drop right, dead, right. but. Um, yeah. You know, they'll have to carry me out, you know, uh, but because, you know, once you're involved and once you, 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 you get the bug, you, you never get rid of it. Yeah. Really. Um, and it's and a I, big family, you know. Oh, it is. And it really is. And it's a community. It's where it all came from is the yeah. whole, is the whole community. And yeah. uh, I just, I just wonder as it gets bigger, if we can retain that sense of community. Um, yeah. You know, and it's just difficult. But it, th- these are all good questions that we, yeah. you know, you know, as a as a community can. I just nice to have a dialogue around it. You know, and yeah. see because there's got yeah. to, there's got to be some solutions because it is yeah. such such a beautiful art form. And it like is. you said, the kids are so athletic. But there's oh so God, many. Amazing. Yeah, and there's. It but, needs to be. I sorry. I also think it needs to be a little more recognised. You know, people talk about the Olympics and this and that and. And, you know, like Irish dancing to me, like these kids are athletes. They need to be recognized. I know we have the words and all of that, but it, it needs to be more sometimes. I think it needs, because once you step outside that city west or wherever it is, no one even knows who you are, you know? Like it needs to be, I don't know whether we can make it like the Olympics or get it televised or 
maybe I'm just like thinking way ahead. No, you're not. You're not the only one. Um, a lot of people think, you know, that we should. It should be televised, especially in Ireland. You know, it, it's just it's too much of our cu- culture to be to be ignored you know so yeah i i I think i don't think that's the way it it has to go because it you know it's just it's it you know it's reality tv right there if we could you know if we were allowed to film at competitions it would be like a soap opera (laughs) well that's the thing i have i have been approached so many times to do my own tv show like dance moms i'm like we're not allowed and i'm like should we just do it (laughs) because you, but you've got to show the healthy side of it, you know. Um, but it just needs to be. It's like these dance teachers just put their lives into these kids, and then it's so that's that because they move on. It's just it's it's like anything. It's got its positives and negatives, and it's what you take out of it at the end of the day, you know. But I d- I think yeah, regardless of where it goes, that the kids who like for us when we were dancing and stuff, we l- learned so many valuable life lessons and how to d- how to deal with people, and we have so many transferable skills and how to r- run events and you know the psychology of teaching and all of that. You know, we, we we get we get all of that out of it. So if nothing else, if it, even if it carries on the way it just carries on, the kids are always going to get that. But I, I I agree with you. I'd love to see it celebrated a lot more. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because I I definitely think after it exploded into the world with Riverdance, that you know that, that's it. It's here to stay, and now it's up yeah. to us where we where wherever we take it. You know. Oh, so. absolutely. Yeah, but it's an, it's exciting time to be a to be involved in Irish dance, most definitely. Um, so, are you? Do you design any dance, Irish dance dresses now? Well, I actually did. I, something I said I would never do. Don't want to go near the parents. <laughs> no offense. I was like, I'm not dealing with that. But I but I I knew I was going to do it. So I actually made a dress for one of my dancers for nationals last year. And it was the most basic, plain, simple, classy dress. And that's all I wanted. And I loved it. And I, that's where it needs to get back to. Because right now, these costumes, they are amazing. Like, my favorite designer right now, I'd say, is Con- Connor Sullivan, okay? And yeah, gorgeous. He's just, yeah. He is just, he, like, he's couture. He's, I text Connor, and I say, Connor, would you, like, he needs to be at New York Fashion Week. That's no, where the stunning. Is going. Stuff is stunning. He needs yeah. to have sorry his 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 costume on a runway because he is just like you know Julie McDonald or for, I know he is just in a I think he's in a league of his own. Um, but obviously, all these other new designers are just like wow, where did you come from? You know, and the costumes are just incredible like I look at them and I get ideas I'm sure they look at my work and they get ideas but it's 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 not even Irish not, they're high fashion it's, it's a fashion show you know and do I like that yes I love it but can, it, can anybody it, afford it yeah. <laughs> yeah but it's so much focus on a cost I know like I've had arguments with parents and kids and other people I'm like they're so upset with what they look and I'm like you can't even turn your feet out you can't even dance in time you know and I get so angry and I'm like it doesn't matter right and that's where I start still, with the basics yeah well, I'm still like you gotta look good like you gotta be but at the same time like if you're gonna do it do it right and, and that's why I'm like god these kids are obsessed by the costume and that's a good thing for designers because that's how we make our living. But for parents and kids and... Yeah, I think they're amazing. Um, I made a costume. I did class costumes for um, the Warriors this year. Very simple, just me. I'm working with another school on class costumes. Um, but I have... Yeah, I'm not going to say no because I'm in the works of making three sold costumes. I would love... <laughs> yeah, I would love to um, put them on display at this coming Aractus. I... With my schedule, I don't know if I have time. Um, but I want to bring my fabric that I use for my my pageant gowns, and I want to make a dance costume out of it. And it's got to be me, and everyone's going to know it's Debbie Carroll. And even if I make one, that's all I want. You yeah, know what no, I mean? Yeah, that's great. Yeah, absolutely. So, 
I'm definitely a hundred percent going to make another one. It's just trying to find the time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> when you've got a million other things on the go. God love you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, the costumes are amazing. Like I just don't knock it from anyone. The work. It's just you know these designers are incredible right now. You know. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Incredible. Incredible. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well. I want, I just, we have one little rapid fire uh, question thing, but I just wanted okay. to say thank you very much, Debbie, for, for your time. You. Uh-huh. It's it's lovely talking to you and it's really lovely to um, just, I think for, for anybody that's listening, but especially for younger dancers, just, of course, competition is where we hone our skill. Um, yeah. And it's hugely important and you have to focus and, and dedicate your life to it. But it's just, I think, nice for people to know that, there are a lot of options once you once you've finished with the competitive yeah. Irish dance world, oh, yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So and you're a shining example of that, so thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Mm-hmm. So to these silly silly rapid fire, but there's some there's some right. there's some silly ones and there's some fun ones. So okay. first of all, what is your favorite food? Ooh. God. Uh, sushi. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I know the answer to this one, but oh, yeah. river dance or Lord of the Dance? Lord of the Dance. Oh, of course. Well, you have to say that. <laughs> What's the best piece of advice you've ever been given? Don't give up, no matter how hard it gets, and believe in yourself. Oh, that's lovely. Um, is there a book that you've read that changed your life? Yes. Uh, Joel Olstein, Every Day is a Friday or The Secret. <laughs> brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Both very good books. Yeah. Um, yeah. Pineapple on pizza, yes or no? <laughs> Uh, mm, yeah, we can do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and lastly, um, if you were to give advice to either competitive or professional Irish dancers, um, you know, uh, anybody that's aspiring to be an Irish dancer, what would you, what would you give the advice? Um, well, I always say take care of yourself mentally, physically, emotionally. Like you gotta, you gotta take care of yourself. That's the only way you're going to perform the best, look the best and act the best. And all the noise, just let it go and focus on yourself and just know that the sky's the limit. And as long as you work, 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 you can get where you want to be. Oh, that's beautiful. Thank you, Debbie. And I will, I'll put in the show notes, um, your web uh, your, your web address and that kind of thing. But if there's, is there a particular way for people to uh, get in touch with you if they want to sample you know, your I'm, work? Yeah, Facebook, my, my Facebook, Debbie Carl Design. Instagram, I, everyone get on the Instagram. Follow me, Debbie Carl Designs. My website is debbiecarldesign.com. It is under construction right now because we're launching a whole new site. So mainly Instagram and Facebook. Right. Perfect. You know, I'm not a hard person to find. <laughs> no, you're not. You're definitely not. Um, and you're very unique and your work is absolutely beautiful. So, oh, thank Debbie, you so thank much. you so much. Um, it was lovely talking to you. You too. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed today's episode of the Irish Dance Podcast. If you haven't already, please go to iTunes or your favorite podcast app and subscribe to our podcast. That would be great. And if you are on iTunes, if you wouldn't mind, please leaving a review. That would be awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, Please visit our website at theirishdancepodcast.com. There's also a survey there where you can fill in what you think about the show so far. So look forward to your feedback and have a great day. Bye bye.